Okay, greetings everyone. We're going to go over how to create an original character. Uh, this class is intended for beginner artists. We're going to cover a few intermediate tips in here as well. I actually was having trouble deciding whether this should be more catered towards beginners or intermediate artists, but I'll tell you which things are kind of more for intermediate artists. I don't want to overwhelm beginners. That's that's something I'm, I'm very like aware of. I don't want a beginner artist to feel like, oh my God, this is too much information. I, I can't handle all of this. So take what things from this class sound helpful to you and ignore everything else, okay? Because what's important here is that you get started with creating your character so that you can start drawing again. This is, of course, we're a community that's here to help those who are uh, neurodivergent and maybe struggling with things like art block. So if this is overwhelming, just ignore the stuff that's overwhelming. So what are we going to cover today? What's included? Uh, so my presentation portion of this class is going to be pretty short and we're going to spend most of our time today actually doing a live demo of designing a character. So it's going to be, it's going to be fun. We're going to have a lot of fun, but there's a few things I want you to know about before we actually get into the demo. So we're going to cover things like character traits, setting, clothing and props, reference gathering, and then after I kind of explain those concepts, then we'll get into the actual live demo. Okay, so when you're designing a character, you'll want to think about what kind of traits that character has. So what's their personality like? Are they, do they have a sense of justice? Are they uh, shy? Are they extroverted? What kind of personality do they have? Are they, do they take advantage of other people? Or are they very caring? Are they courageous? You know, what kind of uh, traits do you think that your, your character that you want to create has? And what are their redeeming qualities? What are the good things? Things that people will like about your character. And then on the flip side of that, what are their flaws? You gotta have flaws. You can't have a character that's perfect at everything, but your character has to have flaws. It's really important for story development and allows your character to feel a little more real if they have flaws. What's their socioeconomic status? Are they, are they rich? Are they poor? Are they middle class? What, where do they fall there? What's their like location of origin? What, if they're from a fantasy world, if this is a fantasy world that this character exists in, what is that world like? You know, what town are they from in that fantasy world? Or if they're like a character from history, what country are they from? What time period are they from? And if you're doing something other than a human, what what species is it? Is it a is it a dog? Is it a cat? Is it a is it an anthropomorphic cat? And if you're, if you have no idea, if you, there's totally, it's totally okay. If you want to create a character and you have no idea, like you don't want to spend the time th figuring out all these things and doing world building and stuff like that. I understand. And there is a tool for you that I think you will find quite useful. And it's called the random character traits generator. This is just a website I found where you just randomly generate character traits. Uh, so you click the button and it comes up with an idea. So it generated here, dishonest, helpful, and cheerful. That's kind of a strange combination. Uh, you can of course keep clicking it until you find traits that you find interesting. So if figuring out like location of origin and socioeconomic status and all that kind of stuff is too overwhelming for you, that's totally okay. Just start with personality traits and that random generator can really help you to come up with something. So it's great if you have no ideas. Um, another place to draw some inspiration is from real people or even your own personality traits. We all have multiple ways that we present ourselves. We may have one sort of personality when we're at work, another personality when we're amongst friends, and yet another personality when we're online, you know, or maybe just based on our mood. We have different moods, we have different ways that we show up in the world. So you can even pull out and tease out these different attributes of yourself and turn those into characters. And you can also draw inspiration from people in your life, maybe a, a family member, a, an aunt or uncle that is kind of quirky and you think would make for a great uh, character, um, or perhaps your enemies 
but just be careful with that one. All right, so another thing to consider is the setting. So I kind of touched on this a little bit in uh, the previous slide, but you got to think about where this character is going to exist. Are they going to exist in the real world in present day? Do they exist in a fantasy world? Do they exist? Where in this world are they from? Are they from a region that's more of a desert? That's more of a forest? Because a lot of these things are going to influence the types of materials and things that are going to be available to them. And so it's going to influence things like their clothing, their props, and it could also impact their personality. Someone who grows up in a very harsh environment, for example, that may have an impact on, on their personality and the, and the way that they problem solve, the way that they carry themselves. If they grew up in a very dangerous area, they may even have scarring. If they've gotten into a lot of fights, if they're in an area that has a lot of aggressive animals or something or predators or what, what have you. Also another thing to think about is theology and religious beliefs of this world. That can also influence your character. Are they, a, are they a particularly religious person? What type of religion do they believe in? How does that impact the kind of clothing or uh, materials that they use or the, or the uh, props that they carry with themselves? Uh, and the technological advancement of this world. Is, it, is this a world that has like a lot of technological advancement or is this a... Is this far into the future? Is it way in the past where there is no technology? So those are all things to consider. Okay, uh, so another thing is if you're creating a character, if you're watching this video and because you're creating a character for the Paper Demon Art RPG, a few things you might want to consider are our setting is more of a steampunk fantasy kind of vibe. So you can use that as inspiration for your setting. Additionally, we have multiple worlds. They're called portals in the Paper Demon universe. And this portal network connects different worlds that have different flora and fauna and different creatures that live there. So those can be sources of inspiration for you as well if you wanted to use that as a starting point for your characters. Okay, another thing is clothing. I think I actually think clothing is probably one of the funnest parts of designing a character. You know, because it's very visual. You're putting some something on the character that's kind of giving you an indication of what type of character they are, as well as props. Um, so the setting that you've chosen for this character is going to influence what kinds of materials are going to be available to them. So if they, if they grew up in, in a forest where wood is plentiful, they may have props that are made out of wood. Or if there's, if they grew up in a, a city that's rich in minerals and rich in metallics and that kind of thing, they might have more metals in, in their props and clothing. Their hair and facial hair, clothing, props, all of that helps to tell the story of who they are. When you are designing these things on your character, you want to kind of add some variety there. So you want to think about a variety of textures, a variety of materials, you know, you want to probably use a mix of different things to add more interest, as well as different shapes of the materials and different sizes of the materials. Some, you might have some areas that have a big piece of cloth and then other areas that are smaller pieces of cloth. This just kind of adds some variety and visual interest to the design. And, you know, we can go over that more when we're doing our demo. Okay, and then so after you kind of have a rough idea of what all those things are going to be, you probably want to gather some reference. Um, reference, I, I've talked about this in multiple of my videos about the importance of reference, um, but this is a really helpful step in the creative process to help you when you're creating your character. So you can gather reference on your setting. If it's going to be a desert, for example, you may gather a lot of images of deserts. If the setting is going to be like kind of a more Egyptian themed, uh, you might gather some Egyptian imagery and that might help you to see like what kind of clothing was worn, what kind of props were used, what types of materials were used. You want to gather that kind of reference. Um, and it's okay if you don't actually have decisions on these things yet either. The reference uh, stage can also help you to decide what things you want to use because then you'll have some visuals that you can look at and compare 
So I've got this example on the right here of a Pinterest board I have that is specifically steampunk. So I have a lot of steampunk clothing uh, image reference. So when I'm going to create a character or to create a new game item, I often look through here to get some inspiration for some things that would make sense to exist in a steampunk themed world. Additionally, if you are going to draw uh, an anthropomorphic character or an animal, it's really helpful to look at pictures of that animal. So if like you're going to create a fox character, uh, you'll want to look at pictures of, of foxes. It can also help to look at anthropomorphic foxes to see how other artists have made that transition from a regular fox animal to a more humanoid fox animal. Like how did they change the anatomy? That kind of thing different clothing styles. You can draw inspiration from outside of the, your setting as well. Um, that can help to bring some uniqueness and interest to your character, as well as different materials, seeing how the light affects those materials, how the materials flow and how the folds happen with the, those materials. Okay. So hopefully that is clear and let's give this all a try. Let's, let's create a character. All right, this is Susie coming from the editor's room from the future. So this part of the demonstration, we're going to speed it up and I'm going to talk through what's going on here. So during this live stream, I took suggestions from the chat on what type of character to create. And the suggestions that we got were a character that is from an underground civilization that is maybe has some Gothic influence. It's a humanoid bat, although I completely forgot about the bat part and didn't actually draw that characteristic in there. Uh, given that he lives underground, there's a lot of fungus that's available there and spider silk. So his clothing is made from fungus and spider silk, as well as animal hides. He's also a scavenger and his main prop is a lantern with a glowing crystal in it. We got recommendations to use uh, for technology to have like glowing crystals because this character lives underground. He might need some sort of way to see. The gender of the character is non-binary, but with uh, he, him pronouns. His personality is rude, industrious, and arrogant. He has a sensitivity to light and he often uses glasses or goggles to protect himself from the sunlight. His redeeming qualities are that he is generous and hardworking. At the beginning of this demo, you can see that I began with the gesture. I tried to go with the gesture that would convey his arrogance. I then began to lay in some of his clothing uh, based on suggestions from the chat. You can also see as part of my process that I am using layers to kind of start with a rough sketch and then refine it on a second layer to start to add more detail. I'm using a variety of different fabrics and materials. So there's some metallic parts that are on the boots. There's uh, furs or skins used for the skirt. And uh, he's also got a poncho made out of mushrooms. As you can see for his prop as well, he's got a spear of some kind. It kind of makes sense if he's going to be underground, he's going to need some sort of tool to help him navigate the rough terrain or perhaps to open up certain areas of the terrain. And then attached to that is his lantern. So once we start to get into adding some color, I just put in a, a base layer that's got some cools and darks in it. Given that he's going to be underground, it kind of made sense to begin with something dark and that will allow us to convey the environment that he's in. I then started to paint in his lantern because this is a light source that's going to give the character and the whole design some ambiance. And for the color palette for his clothing, I mostly stuck to neutral colors given that he's un underground, it kind of made sense that the colors would be more neutral. As far as the fungus poncho, I, I went more a little bit more towards the blues um, because this also matches with the color of his crystal. So tying in the same color elsewhere in the design can help it feel more unified. And blue is also a, a color that can be commonly seen for mushrooms. By the way, if you like to draw original characters, 
and are having a little trouble getting motivated to draw these days or getting motivated to write, check out the Paper Demon art role-playing game. It's a free online game that motivates you to create and draw your original characters. We give you different portals and scenarios to put your characters in to inspire you to draw. Every two weeks we have new prompts that come out and you'll earn virtual currency, virtual loot to help motivate you to keep creating. Our community is also very neurodiverse and very supportive. We're here to be a positive influence in your life and to help you to get creating again and find confidence in yourself. So check it out. The link is in the description below. If you found this video helpful and you want to grow as an artist, consider subscribing to our channel. We host instructional art lessons every month. Join our mailing list or our Discord server to get details on the schedule. Our live streams are a great way to get one-on-one -on -one support with your art because you can ask questions in real time and get them answered. Thanks for stopping by. See you in the next video. Bye!